I'll introduce you. Um, okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the 77th meeting of Media Excellence in Group Theory and Triangular Categories. Uh, today our speaker is Leo Alonso from the University of Santiago de Compostela. And he'll be talking to us about derivatives in the additive context. Okay, here we go. Let me share the screen and please tell me if you can see it okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's Looks okay. good, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me start with uh, giving a fast summary. Um, so what uh, I intend to do is um, to um, approve that the, uh, the derived category of a Grotendi category uh, and we have an extra hypothesis with enough projectives uh, call it uh, D of A uh, can be enhanced to a strong stable derivator. that uh, I'm going to denote by uh, D sub A. Um, so the result is not uh, new, but the proof will be completely different. And um, we we'll rely in methods uh, based in homological, in classic homological algebra. So no, um, no uh, model categories will be used. Uh, so um, let me, um, I, I will spend a few minutes on propaganda, which is I think the, uh, the usual thing. Um, so perhaps most of you know that derivators uh, were introduced by uh, Grotendieck and Heller in the 90s. And um, they may be regarded as um, an ultimate, at least the stable derivators, as an ultimate uh, enhance enhancement enhancement of derived categories, or more generally of homotopy theories. So that's our point of view that uh, derivators give this um, uh, very good enhancement. But uh, let me uh, let me uh, explain this and um, am amplify a little bit this. So as of today, most of the people uh, uh, consider uh, mm, infinity categories as the ultimate enhancement of homotopy theory, uh, as the, say, best enhancement. But, um, what? No room for the word enhancement. Um, but uh, there's a big but. Mm, one issue is that there are several competing models of um, what an infinity category is. Some of these models are most uh, more developed than others, and uh, 
there are comparisons between them and some are good for some applications and but um uh for in the other side the the the, the notion of derivator is just um natural and free of choices so from this point of view um, uh, this is an advantage. So for the drawback, the, the drawback of um, of the derivator, the main drawback is that um, the available literature is smaller. Uh, now that uh, we are in a small company, I can say that uh, uh, after the the huge work of Lurie and uh, the 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 great effort in a, for a, for a different model by Doen and Betsosi, we have lots of results available for for infinity categories, and the, the literature for derivatives is is smaller. And uh, another drawback that some some sometimes people uh, uh, exposes is that um, they seem to capture phenomenon up to level two. meaning uh, homotopic as a phenomena up to level two. But this is not true. Uh, this is not true because um, for one, uh, they have a, uh, they have a, an enrichment on simplicial categories. So uh, with this en with this enrichment, um, the higher phenomena are present. This is known since the work of Renaud, which is uh, more than one, more than ten years ago, and um, uh, there is a, I would say that there's a connection. Mm, I mean. Uh, there are people trying to to understand or to, or to better better said systematize the world of 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 infinity categories and uh, there is the notion of uh, called infinity cosmoi but uh, by uh, mm, uh, verity and real. Which is like the they call it the synthetic theory of infinity categories, and uh, it may well be that uh, that uh, derivators satisfy this. Uh, I mean the 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 full two category of derivators um, uh, are um, an object of this type. I think that um, uh, currently uh, there's a student of uh, Verity called Di Vittorio who is pursuing this, this point of view, trying to understand uh, how all the category of derivators uh, uh, behave. Well, so in a sense, uh, this is my my uh propaganda page and um i'm going to to be more specific about uh the work i'm going to 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 show you today so let me um let me explain what i mean by additive derivator i am only uh i'm sticking to the stable case because i am interested in the life categories so we start with uh, with a uh, abelian category, and um, from this we construct another abelian category, which is the category of complexes of the category A, um, uh, and uh, there's a. Um, there's a very classical path to finally uh, invert uh, quasi-isomorphisms 
and uh, get a new category, which is a, actually, it's not an abelian category, it's a, it's a triangulated category, uh, which, has, which is the, the derived category in which uh, the quasi isomorphisms in the category of uh, complexes become uh, isomorphisms um, in the uh, in the derived category. So the construction goes by um, a procedure that uh, is um, is a uh, um, is essentially classical uh, homotopic algebra. So uh, our our um, our target is uh, to enhance the derived category by constructing a strong stable derivator uh, D of A uh, such that its underlying uh, triangulated category its underlying triangulated category is the original uh, derived category and uh, um, without recourse to model uh, structures in the category of complexes. Let me um, let me explain the benefits of of this. Um, of course, the 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 initial benefit is that uh, the proof is simpler, which is always good, but. Uh, the main one is that um, uh, um, the construction will provide um, an explicit um, um, description of left and right uh, homotopic extensions. In the sense that um, we have complexes that uh, represent them, so for uh, for some proofs, uh, in, in particular, uh, homotopy limits and colimits, And uh, this um, this permits to 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 tackle some proofs just by looking at the structure of this of this um, of this uh, of the construction. So we have we we know who is the homotopy limit of of a uh, of um, a coherent diagram and the homotopy limit too. So this is the so the objective is. Uh, to give a, to give the structure by means of homological algebra and to give the structure in a completely uh, and in the in the most possible uh, explicit way, so that this is um, amenable to make some some computations or to to make some constructions in the spirit of uh, of homological algebra. So uh, perhaps it's good to um, to uh, to give a a, a reminder. on the notion of derivator. So um, first, a pre-derivator is uh, just a strict two-functor. Let's uh, say D from the category of small categories to the big uh, quotation marks, the category of big categories. 
Um, I don't want to to get into set theoretic pro, uh, issues, but uh, I think that uh, with three Grothendieck universes, one gets along. So I think it's it's um, it's okay for for um, for now. So let me um, spell out the the axioms. Uh, the first two axioms are uh, quite uh, simple. That uh, let's let's write it uh, symbolically. Uh, if I take a, um, a coproduct of categories, then it gets into a product of categories. Uh, well, I have to say uh, one one comment. Uh, I want. Uh, Derivators unbounded in two senses. The complexes that I work with are unbounded, and I want all limits. That's why people usually, uh, instead of uh, uh, starting from the category of small categories, um, it starts with a category of suitable diagrams. But uh, uh, what uh, what I'm pursuing is to have all possible homotopy limits. So that's why I am taking the, the full uh, category of small categories. Well, the, the first axiom, as I was saying, uh, just it's a, it's a, it's an axiom that says that the derivator has to compute, has to convert coproducts of categories to products of categories. Of course, we don't restrict the cardinality, but if we were to talk about small derivators, which is not the case in this talk, we would restrict to finite um, coproducts. the the second uh, The second um, condition is that whenever we have a map in one of the levels or categories associated to the derivator, and an object in the in in one uh, in the index category, then um, f is an isomorphism if and only if restricted to every object of the diagram. Uh, this is a notation for the restriction of f to the to that uh, object uh, are isomorphisms. So. Um, for all y, uh, I am abusing a little bit, uh, saying that y belongs to y, referring to this kind of functors. So the slogan for this uh, this axiom is that isomorphisms are detected pointwise. Let me let me uh, write this for for. Okay, so the the next two uh, um, axioms are the, the crucial thing. So um, the first one is the existence of uh, can extensions relative to D, uh, which is uh, given a functor from between small categories and uh, uh, denoting U upper star, the functor associated to to, to the functor root for the derivator, there are uh, a joint functors on both sides, uh, which are denoted uh, u lower streak. Then I have uh, our original uh, functor, and the other adjoint is you uh, sorry, this is U upper star, of course. And the, the other adjoint is U lower star. And this is, uh, uh, I would call them, I would call this uh, relative constants, relative to D. We will see later that in one of the, in particular, they will give um, homotopy limits and co-limits. And the final axiom, uh, we have to, to, to give more notation for a, 
for a map in for a for a functor between small categories u and an object in J that we are going to call we are going to call it uh, lower J. Uh, so we have the following uh, commutative square of functors i over j the the projection to to the unit category to the final category and then this is the object we put the functor and there's um there's a projections because i over j is a category over i uh sorry there's a question in the chat. Can you see it? Uh, no, I don't have the. Okay. Uh, in the definition of pre Yes, 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 yes. That was of... just uh, yeah. Uh, uh well, well. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, it depends on the convention. So, um. I am sticking to the convention in the paper by Groth. Uh, so, um, yeah, well, uh, um, no, no, I'm, uh, let me, let me check. Um, so the, the original convention by, by, um, by Groth and Dick, was uh, to to think of uh, functors as pre-shifts, but uh, for some reason it's more convenient to think of them as simply functors. Okay, so um, so there's a yeah. So th this is the right yeah. This is the right convention. I mean the the yeah. Cut up. So. Um, yeah, the yeah the idea is that for a for a map there is a map in the reverse direction which is u upper star and this is why we write u upper star. But still, we um, uh, uh, not not uh, sticking to the convention of Grothendieck. We are uh, we are assuming that our di our functors are like say diagrams. This is what what we call them generalized diagrams. Diagrams not with a, with a set or not with a, um, um, order set with a pose set, but with a category. Okay, so this is the this is the right convention, and this is why it makes sense to call u upper star the 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 functor associated to the to the functor. So thank you for the for correcting my my typo. And um, what we what we ask for for therefore is that um, the canonical map from p um, lower shriek of this is really pi j because it's the projection with respect to j. Uh, by J upper star, there's a map which is the sorry for that, which is the Bechevalet map to um, J upper star to U lower streak. And uh, what the um, axiom ask is that this map is an isomorphism. And um, similarly, for the corresponding uh, u lower star that I'm not going to write to, to save time. And uh, the um, slogan here is that uh, can extensions, extensions are computed point, point wise. So this would be the, the basic uh, axioms of, of a derivator. Uh, but there are some further axioms to that uh, give nice conditions of on a on a, on a derivator. So I'm going to uh, switch. So further axioms. Uh, 
The first one is the axiom of uh, strong derivator. So the which which says that the underlying functor that goes from the derivator of uh, applied to the walking arrow times j to the action of the derivator to the uh, two arrows uh, is full and uh, essentially surjective on all uh, for any uh, J in or in J small categories. So um, Mm, this this uh, guy here are what we call the the coherent maps, and these are the incoherent map. And we say that any time that we have an incoherent map, we are able to find one coherent map that represents it. This is the the axiom of a strong derivator, which is a actually is a convenient axiom. So now there are two further axioms for further axioms to to define the stable derivators. The first one is pointed. Uh, derivator, which after um, growth, uh, it it just means that uh, all the values of the derivator, in particular the base value, but uh, uh, also any value, uh, is pointed. This has several consequences, but uh, to to check the, the pointedness of a derivator is just enough to, to check for the that the, the underlying category is pointed. And the, the one that uh, interests uh, interest us mo most is the stable axiom, which actually goes back to um, Heller. And for this, I need uh, a little bit of um, notation. Consider the following, the category with three objects. I mean, the the upper square and the, inclu the inclusion into the full square. And we call iota uh, this the inclusion. And also the other, the other one of the lower square into the, the lower corner, into the square, uh, the usual inclusions. So we say that uh, an object uh, of the value of the derivator in the square category, in the square diagram, uh, is uh, co-Cartesian or Cartesian. If it lies in the essential image, of for co-cartesian uh, iota upper square upper streak, and for uh, cartesian iota lower square lower star, uh, respectively. So the um, the Cartesian the co-Cartesian diagrams are the ones that are uh, pushed uh, that are pushed forward by the exceptional push forward, but by this inclusion, and the Cartesian ones are those that are by the usual push forward uh, by this inclusion. And we say that um, D is stable if both notions agree. And this is 
the reminder of our um, of um, the axioms of derivator. And let me uh, give a remark, which is uh, quite uh, quite clear. A complete and co-complete category uh, C uh, defines what is called a representable derivator because uh, you have limits and co-limits, and therefore you have uh, all can extensions. Uh, for um, uh, for an abelian category with limits and co-limits, uh, C uh, will denote uh, by uh, C, the, the representable derivator defined by C. Oops. I should call the, it's better that I call the initial category A because otherwise it's a mixture of notations uh, defined by uh, its value on a, on a, uh, I'm 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 going to not the, the the representable derivator of a, but the representable derivator of its complexes. Uh, so um, it is the uh, complexes of diagrams, or what amounts to the same, the diagrams of complexes. So this is a derivator, and this is more or less for free because uh, any time that we have uh, enough limits in the category A, we have limits in the um, in the uh, category of complexes of diagrams or or diagrams of complexes, and then we have uh, what is called a representable derivator. So let me um, I am very well over the time that I thought I needed. So let me um, let me explain to you how um, briefly how to reach the homological derivator with this uh, setup. Let me at least transmit the basic idea. So um, our starting point is a um, rotten category. So automatically it has enough uh, injectives, but we also ask that it has enough projectives. Um, and uh, we define a pre-derivator that we call D of A, Uh, I correct. by the following formula. Uh, to a category, to a small category uh, I, the derivator assigns the derived category of diagrams. And now the derived category of diagrams, it's not the category of uh, Diagrams on the derived category. In fact, this is a derived category, but the other the other category is not clear that it has a triangulated structure. Well, um, with this mm, definition, which is the usual one, I mean, it's the the one that is used even in in model theory context. Uh, it is clear that uh, the first two axioms are satisfied. Um, the second axiom uh, needs a, a, a little footnote, and this is because uh, quasi-isomorphisms 
are detected pointwise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these two axioms are not uh, surprising. So let me um, let me explain what's the idea, the idea behind the other two axioms. Um, for their three and therefore, um, we start with uh, a functor between small categories and um, um, we have the following um, situation associated to the fact that complexes are um, representable derivator. Uh, we have uh, from, we have the functor in the, well, I'm writing this for convenience in the opposite direction. And the it has two um, adjoints, which come from the representability because you can, they can, the, we have can extensions and we can, we have, um, Compute them. So the point is that deriving, we obtain the following. We have um, a similar diagram with the derived categories of diagrams. And of course, the functor um, u upper star been having two adjoints is exact and it preserves quasi isomorphisms so it extends automatically to the derived category so what to do with the um, uh, needed adjoints well we would like to to have them but of course uh, we can obtain them by deriving and the point is that deriving these adjoints we have a, a, a notion of of derivative so clearly the adjunction property, uh, there three is straightforward, it's automatic. The adjunction property is automatic. And uh, for uh, the axiom, uh, therefore, uh, we get it by imitating the proof of base change in for ships. Of course, there are several subtleties that uh, are different, but the, the main point of the proof is that uh, one can uh, imitate the, the, the proof of base change. And this is, this is what makes uh, the derived category a derivative. And notice that um, once we have uh, homological injective and homological projective or Q injective and Q projective resolutions, um, these, these functors uh, are exist. They are adjoint, of course, by the usual argument. And then uh, it's an exercise on base change, the, the verification of, of, the, of the fourth axiom. Now, the next axiom is the strong um so this amounts to a very classical fact uh if we have a, an object in a map of um, objects in the derived category um uh, uh, after taking resolutions we can represent by a square that commutes up to homotopy. Let me draw the square. So we have uh, phi and phi prime would represent the objects in uh, DA of phi, and uh, gamma one, gamma two would represent the map uh, of of these two objects. 
And then the square is not uh, commutative, but only commutes up to homotopy. And uh, we can specify the homotopy and call it S. So commutes up to a homotopy which is called S. Well, uh, by a classic argument, uh, it can be made uh, isomorphic to a truly commutative square that I'm going to uh, to write because uh, what I can do is just uh, copy and change what uh, and change what is needed. In fact, the only thing we need to change is, of course, we we don't want the homotopy, so we replace the object G by the cylinder of phi, and then uh, the map phi is substituted by the canonical map, and there is an induced um, gamma tilde two map, and uh, that is in the image of the underlying functor. So the, of uh, the, the functor that we denoted, well, of the under, let me, um, of the underlying functor. So not only it's a derivator, but it's also classical that is a strong derivator. So for stability, whoops. Uh, first of all, um, being in an additive context, um, uh, the axiom of pointedness is automatic. So nothing to say because everything inside is, is additive, therefore pointed. And for um, the remaining axiom, uh, if we have a square whose underlying diagram is like this, Uh, after taking resolution, uh, Cartesian or co-Cartesian squares, after taking resolution, um, come from exact sequences of complexes of the form. Mm, well, the one I mean, the one that you are familiar with. Oh, this guy is um, F01. So F01 plus F10, F11. And uh, after taking appropriate resolution. So therefore, uh, the, derived, uh, the, derived, the derivative of the of derived categories is uh, strong, stable, and uh, furthermore, if we take the base uh, category, which is evaluating the derivator in the uh, category one, which is another name for the derived, for the usual derived category of A, uh, you see that uh, we have a triangulation on D of A given by the cone construction and a triangulation on, on the, uh, on the derivator coming from the structure of stable derivator. Well, both triangulations agree. So the classical triangulation is the natural one, which is not a surprise, of course. So this is um, how we enhance the, the drive category. So um, I have, uh, I think I have 15 minutes I'm going to try to, to give you a flavor of one of the applications. Um, so I'm going to try to be telegraphic for this. So the um, application is to, the, to, to give um, a description of um, smashing localizations
in the derived category of a commutative Noetherian ring, where now our category A is just the category of modules with a commutative and Noetherian. Um, so, so by a theorem of, of Neiman, there's a bijection um, between localizing subcategories of the derived category and uh, subsets of the spectrum. This is a kind of surprising result, at least for algebraists, because localizing subcategories are just triangulated subcategories stable for coproducts. And then um, all localizing subcategories of the derived category of an Ethereum ring, commutative, of course, are in bijection with subsets. Um, so the, the issue is that um, such a localizing subcategory uh, has associated a localization sequence of functors uh, to functors that are called the um, uh, corresponding gamma would be the acyclization of or localization, and L, L would be the, the localization. L is an endofunctor uh, whose main, well, uh, um, uh, an idempotent endofunctor uh, such that its kernel is L. For L are the local objects for the localization and the, the orthogonal. Uh, L perp is the um, ah and uh, no I don't, I don't I'm, um, and also L is the image the essential image of gamma so um, and uh, of course the the both in reverse when 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 we consider the perp and uh, the the inter the um, the um, the most interesting localizations are those called smashing localizations in which um both gamma and l commute with coproducts with arbitrary coproducts. And uh, we know that um, by the Niemann's theorem restricts to smashing, localizing subcategories of the derived category and uh, stable for specialization uh, subsets subsets of the spectrum. Uh, so uh, so um, the the problem is given such a y contained in the spectrum of A. How to describe the corresponding? Uh, acyclization and localization, and this is the this is the problem we we want to 
we want to 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 tackle. Um, so um, I I don't have the time to describe the the classical case, the well known case, but just a few words. If y is closed, it's a closed subset. So. Um, therefore, corresponds to the zeros of a certain ideal of the ring A. Then there's a certain description of this functor that goes like this. Uh, for a module M, this is the homotopy limit indexed by the uh, positive integers of the homomorphism of certain Kosul complexes, powers of the, oops, Kosul complex uh, into M. And this description is classical, uh, actually goes back to Grothendieck without up to um, some notational, uh, of course, in when Grothendieck studied local cohomology, there were no homotopy limits. But this is a notion that uh, it it is very easy when the system is just uh, an order set. So this is uh, the homotopy limit in the sense of uh, Boxed and Neiman. of Boxer and Neiman. Which, uh, so we want to extend this description to a stable specialization subset, which means that um, uh, in general, uh, Y is an arbitrary union of, of closed subsets. So we have a bunch of ideals. Notice that um, for an ideal, we we choose a system of generators. Uh, this is what we call F. F is a, is a vector of elements. And so uh, for, a, for a single ideal, we make the choice of a generator and then with this of a system of generators and then with this system, we do not take exactly uh, systems of generators of the powers of the ideal, but um, ideals which are in this uh, generated by powers of the systems of generators. So uh, what we um, what we get is um, I mean the the functor gamma y is determined by its action on residue fields. So to determine gamma y, we have to construct an, a functor and see how it uh, behaves with, with residue fields. And the point is that now, if we take all the ideals corresponding to the to the closed subsets, to the different scheme structures of the closed subsets, we have a very big uh, system. And of course, if we take uh, into account the different generators, we do not have an order set, but we have, uh, um, say, a filtered system. And uh, I won't uh, get into how this, um, this system is, uh, is uh, I'm going to define the system. So, uh, it's a category whose objects are um, just the strings considered as covectors. So we read F as a map from the free module AN to A, and the maps are just commutative diagrams. So a map from F to G. Uh, to G is just 
um, commutative diagram. Uh, AN, AM, A. So we have some map, some linear map here, and F and G here. And uh, this category is co-filtered. Let me believe me with this. And uh, uh, and then we we have the the following description: gamma y acting on M is the derived direct limit. of the derived uh, home dot of the Kosul complexes of these systems into M, where the um, object F belongs to this category that uh, I didn't name is uh, I of Y, but being the categorical filtered and the COSUL complexes homotopically projective, in fact, this description amounts to um, the same thing without, um, without deriving. So something like this, um, limit of home dot of COSUL complexes into M of F, where F belongs to this category. And this is a description that uh, has the advantage that the complexes involved for the descriptions are just compact uh, because I, they are, are causal complexes. And um, the important uh, property that I did not mention is that uh, if um, a localizing category is smashing, then it's generated by compacts. So what we achieve is to give a description of the localization, in this case of the associated acyclization, but we have, of course, an easy way to, 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 denote, to describe the localization just by using compact objects. And um, uh, we expect that, that this formula uh, may be as useful for understanding local homology than the classical formula for the case of a closed subset. And this is in some sense motivated by the structure of the derivator because we dare to take limits on a, a strange uh, co-filtered category like this. Well, notice that here we have to uh, put some technical thing. It's it's uh, reverse the, the map. So this is co-filtered. So it's opposite is filtered. And this is a filter direct limit. So it's exact, and this description uh, makes sense. So, um, well, I have more, more, more things to tell you, but uh, I think that I don't want to get on uh, uh, over the time. And uh, this is a possible application. There is in the paper. There's another application to to group cohomology, but of course, I have no time for for discussing it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Leo. Um, Let's all unmute ourselves and give the speaker a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions or comments? Just a small one. Just yeah, a small one. Uh, hello. Uh, Hi. I'm uh, very curious. Uh, why do you need projectives in your construction? Okay. I need projectives. Um... So uh, I, I uh, so you have this situation, which is given by the fact that uh, on real complexes you have real limits and co-limits. So what are homotopy limits and co-limits? We say they are just derived limits and co-limits. So this functor being um, right adjoint. We can derive on the right, and this is okay because we have injective resolutions. But for this factor, we have derived, we have to derive it on the left. Um, so the point is, if you have projective resolutions, then automatically you have this function. If in the general case, for instance, sieves or quasi-coherent sieves, you don't have projective resolutions, and then uh, there are several ways 
out that we have not uh, been able to to detail. Uh, a possible way out is to use a representability theorem for getting this factor, but then therefore has um, the, the proof of therefore would be um, different and uh, perhaps uh, more work. So this this is like our first attempt to get into the world of the world of derivators without using model categories. We expect that uh, there are several techniques like representability and localization that allows us to, for instance, to speak the derivative of quasi coherences. But uh, for the moment, this is all. This is all we have. I don't know if I answer your question. Thank you. Yes. Oh, well, very. Thank you. Thank you, George. Any other questions? Yeah, do you want to say something about the group cohomology of the patient? Oh, um, uh, perhaps. Mm, uh, very few words. I mean, um, so the group homology is, um, uh, we start with, uh, so in, in a very, in a very, um, uh, the idea is that a representation is just a, a, a functor from the uh, classifying category of the group, which means only one object and maps the objects of the group. And for instance, we have we can take representations in complexes, which is what we are interested in. And this is just a representation that we call something like M tilde, because M would be the complex that uh, is at the base. And um, uh, what happens is that, um, for instance, Frobenius reciprocity is embedded in the derivative. Let me write uh, Frobenius reciprocity. Uh, with the language of, of the derivator with respect to, uh, I mean, say, uh, well, say A is the category of modules over a ring. And uh, here any ring works. So I'm going to write just the A. So we have uh, the, um, for, a, for a morphism of groups phi, we have both, um, both values of the derivator. And then uh, we have the, uh, as the map is going from H to G, uh, so goes to from uh, the reverse direction. And this is just uh, the restriction map. So the derived uh, induction is, is just the, um, the drive uh, lower shriek and the drive co-induction is just, oops, no, it's not. Um, the drive co-induction is just the derived uh, lower star. So this is just Frobenius reciprocity. So you see that Frobenius reciprocity is just, uh, it comes out for free from the structure of the derivative. And from then, uh, we we were able to, to establish a derived version of the Shapiro lemma, uh, which is uh, comparing cohomology of the induction with the cohomology of, of the representation for a subgroup, and also, we have a, a version of linden hoschel server spectral sequence. Um, it's not completely immediate. You have to, to use a, an intermediate functor. You have to interpret uh, representations of the subgroup with certain representations of the quotient. But um, this is done very clearly with the language of, um, I mean, with interpreting representations as this. And of course, homology and cohomology are limit, derived limit and derived colimit. So uh, I would say that everything works very, very clearly. And uh, 
another dream would be to pursue this this topic like looking i mean you have all the all the machinery of derivators now you have i don't know localization represent representability theorems so for special groups perhaps we can look at i don't know duality fun um theorems i don't know but this is just i mean what this established in the paper is uh lyndon hosius already in the setting is is very is obtained well, do you need g to be finite or can g no. be so Exactly, right? It can no, be, discrete. Uh, we are discrete. Compact. We don't discrete groups. Also, also compactly, right? Also? Compactly. Uh, we haven't looked at uh, more general things like uh, algebraic groups or Lie groups, but um, for discrete groups, everything works fine. It's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, the, the, the point is that we are making the form, uh, these theorems formal, so... So you need a, a, any infinite discrete group with uh, finitely generated morphic homology, or is that even not required? No. Of course, yeah. The, the what you're saying is that now this is this is just uh, Frobenius reciprocity, Shapiro's lemma, and Lindo Hoshi's lemma. Okay, but now you have finer, do one finer results with what what are compact objects and all that stuff, and this yeah. is yeah, this yeah. is. This is something to explore, but uh, for me, the, the 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 good thing of this setting is that you have a very rich structure that you can apply, mm, and are a very rich like system of ideas. Uh, how to transplant, I mean, ideas of localization in rings to this setting or things like that. So this is this is why why it fascinated us to 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 look at these things. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can talk more about this maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other any other questions? Anyone? Well, if there are no more questions, um, let us thank Leo again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for for coming. We have uh, Scott Bolton next week and. Dan McConnell, here we go.